All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. Oh, uh, boy. By the way, I, I don't know. I know you don't watch a lot of Netflix, but there is a hilarious show that's so stupid. I love it. It's called The, the Detroiters. I guess it was on Comedy Central before. I love Tim Robinson. He's awesome. And I just stumbled across it, and I watched uh, a few episodes with a friend of ours, and I'll be damned if out of nowhere, Kevin Nash didn't have a cameo in that. No way. Nope. Yeah, just saying. I know you don't normally watch TV, but you should check that out. I think you'd like that. Okay. I mean, because it's funny because you hear his voice before you see him. And I said to the person I was watching with, that's Kevin Nash. Yeah. And then sure enough, because he has a very distinctive voice with the big yeah. reveal, I'm like, what the everything's hell? wrestling. What the hell's he doing here? Yep, exactly. Uh, but he was going to be a part of what you were doing here. Uh, he's going to be coming in around the same time. Just to catch everybody up on the timeline. Now you've got Fox sports net. Now you're going from uh, weekly pay-per-views to monthly pay-per-views. So we got to keep building. We need some more names. Kevin Nash and Scott hall are coming in. And I think people will think it's going to be assumed that they're certainly coming. Maybe they don't come in as fast as we originally thought based on the way it was reported in the newsletters, but they're even referred to as being outsiders not the outsiders just people who don't work here outsiders not a capital o because WWE has that trademark why did you think that it was so important to have scott hall and kevin nash be a part and was anyone against the idea feeling like it might be too quote unquote wcw you know at this time oh boy you've set the stage well but so we're two years Two and a half years into weekly pay-per-views, almost two and a half years, and we're going to make the jump to, to monthly. And so there's a bit of a cadence and a weekly. And so AJ Styles had been with us two years, James Storm. I will call it our homegrown guys. Um, there was a sense of the, the boat being rowed and the Fox Sports Net. And, you know, there was a lot of to be said about the relationship with the Fox Sport, both good and bad. But we knew, and and the limited data, but the data we got that we were doing good to extraordinarily good. On, but again, Friday afternoons. But we all knew all right, we're going to monthly pay per views. Let's shake up the bushes. Let's get as many big names, not as many. Let's get some valuable names to get up there. And when I called Kevin and Scott and kind of laid things out, and I said, "Hey, man, we're not talking in a year deal. We can't afford you, but can we figure out a series of dates?" And they both were like, yeah, I remember both of the phone calls, uh, uh, you know, Scott Hall's kind of vividly. He's like, Kevin, this ain't, and I said like, Hey man, it's, it's six, eight, 10. You guys kind of tell me, what do you want to dive into? But we're doing our first monthly pay-per-view and I'd love for you guys to, to, to kind of, you know, you no, know, you don't have to have a match, but you're, you're part of this whole build and it's me against Hardy and, uh, everything that's going to go into it. And just uh, uh, look, those two guys in, in, um, Oh four, they're only a few years removed from, you know, just the biggest box office attractions in the entire business. And so that was a part of the mindset. Let's get them out there up front and, uh, hopefully, uh, make some noise, uh, to sell some pay-per-view buys. I've always been fascinated with the, um, the politics of them coming in, because it does feel like, you know, when, even when they, they came back to the WWF after WCW had went under a lot of the locker room seemingly didn't want them there. Their reputation or their reputation preceded them, I believe is the phrase. And so now when they're coming in here, you're going to see more of the same. And I know we play some of that out in storyline with the, you know, the homegrown talent, if you will, the Samoa Joe's and AJ styles and things like that, taking issue with these, you know, older, more established stars coming in and taking the top spots and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an age old story, but why do you perceive that there was ever any quote unquote real heat in the first place? Like I don't view that there were dollars that were earmarked for, Hey, we're going to give away this amount of money. Somebody's going to get it. And well, Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, well, they got it. And I know that's, it's a lot more complicated than that. It's not really the way it works, but you're going to be dealing with that again here, but you're also a wrestler. So how did you view with that perspective that you were hearing about from other guys? Well, 
and and I'm not going to say everyone, but most people that are listening to this podcast to go back 20 years where the industry was again, coming off the heels still relatively okay. WCW has been dead four years. Um, you know, the monopoly was in full effect. Um, triple a new Japan, you know, just these international promotions were really not on the radar if at all. Um, and so it was the WWE and then this little bitty upstart and then nothing like the independency. That's what I'm saying. The, the business was just so entirely different and we encouraged everybody and we knew our realities when you have, I call him a gray headed Jerry Jarrett, but a, I'm saying that respectfully, a guy who had promoted wrestling and the fa our family had done it since the forties basically say, Hey man, all we're asking for you is, you know, in the Wednesday days, one day a week, the other six days a week, go work your ass off, go work anywhere you want to work, make as much money as you want to make, do everything you can. Cause you're in, you're, in reality, you're going to help us. And then we went to the Sundays. Okay. So we're kind of asking, uh, you know, uh, the TV tapings, but it's still, we know we're not making the talent a full-time living. So we encourage them to go work everywhere else. And if you didn't, Hey man, that's kind of on yours because we're at least giving you some type of platform. Obviously this is prior Twitter, prior Instagram, prior Facebook, YouTube was yeah not even born by now. So again, it's a completely different world. And so the, Dave Meltzer's of the world, the observers, the torches, the, the, you know, Bob Ryder just passed away, which made me think of how powerful at one time one wrestling.com was and all that. So the websites had to create content. And so they had to talk about all kind of craziness and this and that, and this and that. But at the end of the day, it made for good writing. Holland Nash upset the locker room. Holland Nash did this. Holland Nash did that, all that. But the reality was, the people that were on our, I will call it our weekly roster to get the opportunity for Kevin to Scott to be on our show. They welcomed it because they knew, Hey boys, these are big stars. They can help us. It really was that simple. Let's talk about something that maybe wasn't so simple. A misunderstanding perhaps, or maybe this is the way it happened with Joe E legend. It's in the observer that he had been ripping on you and Dutch Mantel pretty strong. And I guess there's some hurt feelings because he has some unkind words to say about your wife, Jill's battle with cancer. Uh, are you even aware any of this is going on? Or are you finding out all of this years later? Yeah, I never knew. Well, not years later, but it was, I'd say it was months later, but I never knew any of the comments about Jill. Um, I, I remember Dutch saying a month or two after it happened, Hey man, he took a pretty good shot at me too. And I said, Oh, we're in the same club. Um, but you know, stuff like that, uh, whether it was Joe or whether it was any other talent that may take a shot, uh, whether it was words that got back to me, cause it, it's funny how new you news used to travel. It used to be conversation to conversation, to conversation, to conversation, and then it gets back to whoever it may be. Now it's almost instantaneous. It's in a tweet or a post or this or that, or all, you know, just the exchange of information, but it always kind of circles back and you have to take everything with a grain of salt in that. Okay. They ain't happy. They wanted a bigger push, uh, their interpretation, uh, and look, I've never professed to be perfect, but their interpretation on what our plans were for them and their, and I, you know, it's a, Big miscommunication. They had plans that they thought they were going to be headed down one road and we had different plans, but it still happens to this day in every wrestling organization and every country in the world. It's just how it happens. Creative talent relations, booking. There's always going to be folks at odds. It's just the nature of the beast. Man. It's just, uh, it's wild how quickly this negative stuff just blows up. Here's what's written. Uh, I guess this is a recap of what Joey legend had to say. TNA was a disaster and a prime example of having good nature taken advantage of Jeff Jarrett promised me many things in order to entice me to come back to Canada 
and work in Nashville for him. And that lying scumbag broke his word on everyone. Money, gimmick, push, bookings, absolutely everything was a complete lie. And I consider him the lowest form of life in the world. I was just in Switzerland on a show that I'd gotten Jeff booked for last year before he showed his true colors. And I had every intention of kicking five shades of crap out of him in the locker room. I had no intention of hiding my feelings and told several of the others to please just stay out of it while we had it out. Jeff ended up canceling out at the last minute due to his wife and her problems with cancer. Normally I would have said that the dirty snake just wanted to no show the event and keep the deposit that was sent months ago. And I'm the last one to sympathize with Jeff for any misery he may endure. But even I can understand him staying with his wife for such a difficult time for her. Truthfully, I wish her no ill will and pray for a speedy recovery for her. Marrying Jeff is more than enough of a pain in her life and she deserves no more. <laughs> that made me laugh. The real tragedy is that the cancer got to her and not Jeff or that coward piece of garbage, Dutch Mantel. My goodness. <laughs> Well, kind of, well, Joey legend up on cage match right fast. See what he's up to these days. I'm not familiar with his game. Well, but I mean, even in those days I had to go now, did he really say this or did this writer who wants to get clicks kind of put some words in old Joe's mouth? It just, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's wrestling. It's absolutely wrestling. It's like nowadays guys get mad at different people that say different things and i'm like hey man do y'all understand this is a, a industry <laughs> that the movie movie business oh siskel and ebert made a lot of money through the years getting people to read their reviews and they got paid money by all kinds of media to uh, the wrestling critics connie the wrestling critics he's still working jeff he wrestled in june of this year Right on. How old is how old is Joe? Fifty five. Okay, I thought we were pretty close in age. You've also, if you're not familiar with Joe E. Legend, maybe you know his work as Joe Legend, Joe X Legend, Legend XL Legend, Joe Ace, just Joe, Bluto Belushi, Billy Johnson, Cowboy Billy Johnson, Dragon, Master Joe Storm, Nord, Psycho Joe Sampson, Joe Megalodon, and Jerry Legend. God, right? You just did a quick Wikipedia. How about that? Uh, Jeff, what's your favorite Joey Legend match? We actually had in the Asylum Day. See if there's one on there. Um, we had, I, I, yeah, I want to say it was an Asylum match. A hell of a match. He was big and was agile as a son of a gun. He was a hell of a worker. Or is, you know, I hadn't seen him working here, so I can't still say that he still is or isn't, but. Uh, I, I remember uh, an asylum, either it was a brawl or a match, and we're going back a few years. Uh, but he he's he was a big man that could go, as they say. I think you did uh, pay per view number fifty four, and then came back two weeks later, guitar and a baseball bat on two poles. Okay, how about that? Yeah, but look at you, look at you pulling it right up. A hell of a hand, as they say. Well, uh, you know, I, I certainly did you know. ever, did you ever patch things up with, I mean, I know you don't care. I, you, that was BS Jeff, but have you ever spoken to him? No, I hadn't spoken to him, but I feel like we kind of let bygones be bygones. I feel like I may be wrong. Somebody's going to remind me, but uh, well, let's just stir it up right now. Just for funsies. Oh, buddy. Just, you know, something to do. <laughs> God, that's all in the review mirror. Uh, I, if he really felt he wanted me to have cancer, I, I feel sorry for him. Oh no. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I, I will say though, when he was rattling off the promo, marrying Jeff is more than enough of a pain in her life. And she deserves no more. <laughs> I mean that he should put that on a Hallmark card. You think? Yeah, dude. Like Matt, that's what I'm going to give Karen every year. But you know? did, is, is there anything about Dutch? Did he, did he, uh, and that coward piece of garbage, Dutch Mantel. I remember Dutch saying, yeah, took shots at me too, Jeff. I'm like, what? He says, uh, the company is a second rate backyard promotion that masquerades itself as professional. They all have great talent in the world, but they bury it to build up Jeff Jarrett, a no talent hack. Who's gotten by solely due to his father's connections. 
regarding WWE. He says they had cut, they had me cut my hair and act like a bitch. Tom Pritchard tells everyone that the best gimmicks are you with the volume turned up. I have four black belts and I've had four offers to finance me to enter the UFC. They gave me a gimmick that was destined to fail from the start, had no future and let led me to unemployment within a year. Their writing staff was brutal, specifically a loser named Jamie who wanted everyone to be impressed that he does karate. I guess that a guy who would never be on camera should try to get over as a tough guy instead of improving himself at his job. And he sold me out for a few cheap laughs that took, took the thing nowhere. But I guess if you've been watching the product for the last few years, you've seen firsthand what I mean. So listen, I've got it figured out when it comes to Joey legends career, it's Jeff Jarrett's fault. It's Dutch Mantel's fault. It's that asshole writer, Jamie with WWE's fault. It's WWE creatives fault. It's the actual office. It's the guy who told him to cut his hair. It's Tom Pritchard. God. I mean, do I have it about right? <laughs> I didn't know that he took shots at old Tom Pritchard. I um, mean, everybody's catching strays from this motherfucker. <laughs> I know they might say you're a has been. He's a never was, but maybe he, maybe he'll get a lumen. He'll get his ass in shape and he'll come beat the shit out of both of us. 